Hi guys and welcome to my channel and thanks for stopping by and watching. In this spray paint art video I'll be showing you how to start spray paint art on a budget by getting most of the things needed from around your home or for free. So first up are the stencils for making planets which can be found for free or given to you by someone. These can be found on round food tubs and what you want to use is the lids from the tubs. So I'll just show you some examples of the lids I use. So like I said, these are off the top of food tubs, the lids. So you've got different sized ones. All off food tubs. So you've got some big ones, some medium ones and some small ones. And also when you're choosing your lids, make sure there's a lip like this on the lid. And the middle of it's not touching, so only the lip of the lid touches the surface when you place it down. So an example of that is this lid here. So you've got the lip there of the lid, but the actual middle is higher. So when you place it onto your painting, all this will touch the painting. Whereas you just want it where the lip here touches your painting. There are other things that can be used for free apart from food tub lids. Just make sure they are round and that only the lip of a lid you are using touches the surface. So for example, you could use a bowl because the lip, lip here will just be touching the surface. So when you place it down like that, it'd be only this lip touching your painting. So I'll sit these to one side for a minute. And also, you've got metal lids here, and these ones are plastic. The majority of the lids I use are plastic. I have the odd metal one that I use sometimes. It doesn't really matter if you are plastic or metal. So next up is something to make texture with in your painting, which can also be found for free or given to you by someone. And that is magazine paper. Ideally, you want the magazine paper to have a glossy finish on it so it doesn't stick to the wet paint. But you can use any magazine paper, you just have to be a bit quicker and not press so hard when making the texture. So I'll just show you an example of the magazine paper that I use, which is this. This is from Pages out of a TV magazine. And all you want to do is when you're using it for your texture, you can just crunch it up a bit, screw it up a bit, so you get some lines in it to make your texture. And you can do different patterns in it to make different types of texture. So the texture looks a bit different from one another. I have done a tutorial that you can find on my channel about textures and how to fold a paper or magazine paper in different ways to give you different textures on your planets. There are also other things you can use, which are also free, but can be good for making texture. And they are bin bags, plastic grocery bags, newspaper, plastic sheets, packaging from things. So when I mean packaging, I mean something like this. This is a packaging from a canvas. This will also work well for making texture or any kind of packaging like this. So next up is something to paint on. This could be found for free, given to you, or cost very little from a second hand shop, thrift stores, etc. And that is a second hand canvas with a print on it. So what I mean by printed canvas is something like this. Something with a print on it that you've got no more use for and you can quite easily paint on this. And these will work just fine for when you're starting out and want to keep the costs down. I did my first two paintings on reused canvases as I had two unwanted ones in the shed. And they worked well for just giving it a go to see if I liked this form of art. So I'll just show you both of them now. So this was the first ever spray painting I did. This one had purple flowers underneath and I just painted straight over the top of it. So I think I did this one back in March 2018.
And this was the second one I did. This one I did straight after the first one. Because I enjoyed doing the first one so much. I went ahead and did a second one straight away. This one had... This one had red roses underneath it. And I did the same as the first one. Just sprayed straight over the top. And I was really happy with these when I first did them. So all I did before I painted the canvases was to give them a good clean as he had some dirt on them. I didn't prime them or anything like that. I just went ahead and painted straight over the print. So the fourth thing you're going to need is something to sign your finished painting with which can also be found for free or given to you by someone and that is a screwdriver something like this this is just a tiny flat screwdriver this will work fine for signing your paintings you could also use a nail or a screw if you don't have a screwdriver or a white pen to sign your painting with so the fifth thing is something to cover your hands. These can be found for free or given to you by someone. And they are rubber or latex gloves. So something like I'm wearing, latex gloves. Or you can have these which are like rubber gloves, marigolds. You don't need to have these, but I would recommend having some on so you don't get paint all over your hands. So the next thing you're going to need is spray paint, which will be something you may have to buy unless you have some lying around in the shed or you know anyone that is getting rid of some for free. I already had some from years ago that I kept in the shed, so I used that to paint my first few paintings. The paint I used was car spray paint, which I found worked good for trying out this form of art. So when I first started, I used this paint, which was car paint. I'm not even sure you can buy this paint anymore. It's been that long since I bought it. So if you haven't got any spray paint, or you are unable to get it for free from someone, and you need to buy some paint, then I would recommend buying a black and white and two colours of your choice. These can be your favourite colours or two colours that work well together. Spray paint comes in lots of different brands and prices. You don't need to buy the expensive brands when you are first starting out. Any cheap brand will work. And that way you haven't spent much money on paint if spray paint art is not for you. Also, some countries have different brands which may not be available in your country. And spray paint prices can also be a lot different from country to country. For example, in America you can get a 400ml black or white spray paint for around a dollar. And in the UK a 400ml black and white is around £2.50 to £3. Other countries may be cheaper or more expensive though. Spray paint also comes in a few finishes, which are gloss, semi-gloss, matte, high gloss and satin. The most common ones used for spray paint art are gloss, semi-gloss and matte. Try and avoid satin spray paint as it's not very good for spray paint art. So I'll show you some examples of different spray paint brands that are available in the UK and may be available in your country as well. And they are Montana White, Montana Black, Montana Gold, Molotow Covers All, Flame Blue, MTN Hardcore, MTN 94, Cobra HP, Cobra LP, Dope Supreme, Clash, MTM water based spray paint Iron Lac Basic 
Belton Molotow Premium. Iron Lack Lack. Uster. Flame Orange. AKA Colors Writer Series. Dope 400. Department bought spray paint. And Rust Oleum Painter's Touch. And also, you can get car paint. I'll be doing a review tutorial video for each of the brands I've just listed. The first one coming in two days time and then every two days after. Spray cans can also be different depending on what brand you buy. As some have high pressure valve systems, some have low pressure valve systems and some have variable valve systems. They also have different stock caps on the cans depending on what brand it is and what valve system is on the can. The caps can be either fat caps, skinny caps or somewhere in between them. And the last thing I'd recommend getting, and is the most expensive thing you will buy, is a mask or respirator. This is to protect you from the spray paint dust, particles and fumes that come from the spray paint. So the respirator I use is a 3M7502 half face mask which you can buy replacement filters for. So this is the respirator I use, the 3M7502 with a replacement filters. And all you have to do when you want to change them is just turn it like that and they come off and you can replace them. Then you just put them back on like that and turn it and then they're on. I find this mask really good. To be honest with you, when I first gave spray paint art to try, I didn't have one for the first few paintings. The only reason for that was if I didn't like doing spray paint art, then the mask wouldn't have just sat there in the shed or have been thrown away, which then would have been a waste of money as the masks are around £40 with two filters in the UK. Right, that's everything you need to give spray paint art a go on a budget. So with that, I'm just going to do a quick painting using the materials I've listed in this video. And with the same materials I used for my first two paintings. And I'll be using the car spray paint in this video, as this is what I used when I first gave spray paint art a try. So before I start, I'm just going to move all these cans out of the way. All the different brands. Like I said, there'll be a video for each of these coming on my channel. The first one coming in two days time. So there's 21 different brands here, including the car but including the car paint that I'm going to use in this video. So I'll just move everything out of the way. Put that over there with a screwdriver to sign the paint to move at the end. I'm going to swap my gloves over as well to these marigolds, I think. Because this was what I first started with when I first started painting. I used a pair of these that I found underneath the sink. Right then, before I start the painting, I'll just show you how the cap sprays. I'll be doing two cap tests for this, as there are two different stock caps on the cans. So I'll be doing a cap test on a 4 inch wide piece of glossy paper to show you how wide the cap sprays. So like I said, there's two different caps on here. The black has a different cap to the rest. And also with this car spray paint, once you take the lids off and then you, you're not really sure what paint there is because there's no colour code on them or nothing. So what I've done is I've had to write something on them so I know what colours what, so I don't pick up the wrong colour. And as you can see, these are the stock caps that came with the cans. So you've got this one here and a different cap on the rest of them. 
because they're two different makes of paint. So we come with different caps. So I'll do the black one first. Cap test on this one here. So I'll just pull some paint through. I haven't used these paints for a few years. They've just been sitting in a box. So the last time I used these paints were back in 2018 when I tried to spray paint off for the first time. So like I said, I'll be doing the black first cap test. So. so as you saw there, the line's pretty thin, but it did let quite a bit of paint out and the paint seems to be a bit runny. So I'll just give you a closer look of this one. So that's the line of cap reduced, the black one. And now I'll just do a colour one on here, the one with a different cap. So I'll just pull some paint through. And as you saw, that cap also produced a thin line. But that also let a bit too much paint out because like I said, car spray paint seems to be a bit thinner than some of the other brands I mentioned earlier on in the video. So I'll give you a closer look of that one. So that's a line I've produced. So as you can see, the paint's glossy. It has a glossy finish to it. I think the valve system in these cans are a high pressure valve system because it pushes the paint out pretty fast and the caps on these cans are something like a skinny cap would spray not too wide and also the cap on this one the black spray paint didn't spray a very wide wide line either so that could be something like a skinny cap so now I've shown you how both caps spray we'll move on and start painting the paint in so I'll just move these two pieces of card out of the way. Stick them to one side. Move them out of the way a bit. Move these over a bit. And then like I said, I'll be painting on the printed canvas, which is this one. I've not done nothing to it. I've just given it a wipe over to give it a bit of a clean before I start spraying on to get any dirt off it. But apart from that, I'm going to be painting straight on top of it. And for this one, I'm just going to do some simple planets, a simple space painting with a couple of these lids using the magazine paper to make the texture. Like I said, I'll be using the car spray paint. And then at the end, I'll be signing the painting with this screwdriver. So the first thing you want to do is get your lid stencils. I'm only going to be using a few of these. So I'm going to put most of these to one side. So I'm going to have this big one here, I think. And I think I might have just one more here. So a nice simple painting. So now we have the lids that we're going to use. What we're going to do first is spray around them to give you an outline of where the planets are going to go in your painting. So with a colour, I'm going to be using the blue to spray around these lid stencils. But before I do that, the colours I'm going to be using in this video are white, a lilac colour, blue and black. So like I said, I'm going to get a blue and then spray around these lid stencils. So you just want to press the cap lightly to get some paint out. So now we have the outlines around the lid stencils, we'll lift the lids off for now and place them to one side. And then the next thing we're going to do is fill these outlines in with some colours. So we'll get a lilac first and we're just going to fill the outlines in. So this paint is pretty runny, this car spray paint, so we will pull a lot if you sprayed in one place also the caps 
do let quite a bit of paint out. So I think these cans are a high pressure valve system in the cans. So I've got a bit of a lilac down. Now I'm going to get some of the blue and just spray it in places. So like that. So now I'm going to put some black over it. And a bit of white. So there's quite a lot of paint down there. Because with the paint being runny, it'll soon pool itself. So now we'll get the magazine paper to make the texture with. Like I showed you early on, just crunch it up a bit. So you get some lines in it to make your texture on your painting. So then we'll just give it a light rub. And pull it off. And fold it in half. So you got a clean piece. I'll just do the same. And if you get too much on your magazine paper, just chuck that to one side and then get another piece. It will crunch this piece up. And rub it again. Just watch how many times you rub it because the more you do your texture, the more the paint will start mixing with each other. So I like that texture on there, so I'm going to leave that like that. So the next thing I'm going to do on here is put the highlights and shadows. So I'll be using the white for the highlight. So what you want to do is press the cap down pretty light for this, so you get like a mist effect, so you can see the colours underneath. So we'll just press it lightly. I'm going to have the highlight here this side. With the paint being a lot runnier, it's thinner as well, which makes it good for misting. So now we have the highlight on here, as you can see. We're going to add the shadow area here, so that'll be with the black. So I'll spray the black this side, just spray it lighter. So I'll do for the shadowed area. These caps are spitting a bit, but like I said, they've been sitting in the box for over four years now, since I last used them. So now we have our planet done, the highlights and shadows on that planet. We're going to move on to this one here. So first up, I'll get some lilac, spray it in. Not too much, because like I said, the paint is thin, and if there's too much in one spot, especially in a small area like this, the paint will pool on top of each other and start to separate. So I'll do for the colours in it. Now I'll get some black and some white. And then we're going to use the magazine paper again. So just crunch it up a bit so you get some lines in it, some crinkles. Like that. I don't know whether you can see here. Can you see where the blue is coming back through on the white here? That's because it's too much paint underneath the white when I put it on. So then the paint starts separating from each other. So like here and here. So the only reason why this paint is separating here is because it's just too much paint in one spot. And that's the only reason why the paint is separating. So if you do have these issues when you spray painting or you're just starting out, just spray a bit less paint in that in a smaller area and then it should stop this separation of the paint. So we'll get the magazine paper, crunch it up so we have the lines, and then we'll just place it on and give it a light rub. So I'm not sure whether the texture is going to come out on the first pull of the paper because there was a bit too much paint down. So I'll just try. And as you can see there, where all the paint was pooling here, it hasn't produced much colour. So if this happens, you can always go back over and give it a real light rub. But like I said, the more you do the texture on it, the more chance of paint will mix with each other. 
and make a mess of a texture. So when you are going back over to do more than the texture once or twice, just do it lightly. Give the paper a light rub, the magazine paper. Because if you press it too hard, then all the paint will come off. So I quite like how that's looking now. So I'm going to leave that like that. So I'm going to move over to the highlights and shadows. So we're going to do the highlight first. So I'm going to do the highlight first with the white. So like I said, we just press the cap lightly. So I'm going to have the highlight here, yeah? I've done that the wrong way round, but the light source will come in from here, I think, somewhere like this. Or it might be here in the middle. So I'll do the highlight here on this side of this planet. So like I said, we'll just press the cap lightly to get like a mist on it. So I'll do for the highlighted area. Now with the black, we'll go the shadowed area. So like that, I'm not pressing the cap down very hard there. Because like I said, this paint is thin. And if I press the cap down all the way, it'll just produce way too much paint here. Now we have the highlights and shadows on both of the planets. It's time to put the lid stencils back on. Well, ideally, you want the paint to be dry before placing the lid stencils back on. Because if the paint's still wet and you place the lid stencils on, the lid stencils will stick to the wet paint. So when you lift them off later on, there'll be like rings on your planet where the lid's lifted some of the wet paint off. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to go ahead and place the lid stencils on while the paint is still wet. So if the lids do stick to the wet paint, I can show you what I mean about the rings on your planet when you lift the lid stencils back off. So the first lid I'm going to put on is a big lid on this planet here. So what you want to do is you want to cover some of the shadowed area and the highlighted area up with your lid stencil. So I'll put that one there. And I'll get the other lid stencil. And I'll place that on there here. Now we place the lid stencils on, we'll move on to the background. So for this I'll be using the black, I'm painting all the canvas black. But before I do that I'm just going to move this magazine paper out of the way and the screwdriver so I don't get any paint over it. So like I said I'm going to cover the canvas with black now. So what you want to do when you spray around these lid stencils, just spray a bit lighter. So as you can see, I'm pressing the cap all the way down here and the paint's coming out pretty thick. So around this lid stencil light. Because you don't want the overspray going underneath your lid stencil and landing on your planet. Any of the black. And we'll just spray around the edges. So that's enough black on the background. I don't want to put too much on there because like I said, the paint is runny. And then I'll have too much black paint down. So when I add a bit of colour into the background, it'll start separating. Like I showed you earlier on in this planet where the paint started separating because there was too much there. So now we have some black down. I'm just going to add a bit of colour into the background using the two colours from before. The lilac and the blue. I think I'll just add a bit of lilac first. All I'm going to do is just spray it out of the cap. Give you a bit of like space gas, dust, something like that. The caps are spitting a bit here. Not spraying as smooth as I'd like them. Um, Thing I'll do there for that and add a bit of blue to it. So 
interesting places. I'm just going to go back to the black and just go over a bit of it. Just clean it up a bit. Right, so I think what I'll do for the background, the colours, quite like that. I don't want to put too much paint down because with the paint being runny, I don't want the paint start separating in the background. So now I'm going to get the white. I'm just going to put like a bit of a star or something here between the two planets. That can be the light source. So I'm just going to do like a dot. Well, I'm not sure how this is going to spray, so I think I'll just try it here. Yeah, that, that should be all right. I think that'll work all right. So I'm just going to press the cap down lightly for this. So I quite like that. Yeah, that's better. I like that. So now we've added like a light source, a big start to the painting. I'm just going to move on and add some smaller stars to the painting using the white paint again. And what I'll be doing for that is spraying some onto my fingers here. So you have something like that. And then what you want to do is sp spray some onto your fingers and flick it away from the painting a few times to get most of the paint off your fingers and then flick the rest onto the sheet. This way you won't get big white blobs on your painting that don't look like stars. So flick it away a few times and then flick the rest onto your sheet or your canvas or whatever you're painting on. Add a few more there. Add a couple more. Be up there. It's up to you how many stars you add to your painting. You can add as many or as little as you like. So I think I'll do for the stars. I'll put quite a few stars on this because the paint's thin, and some of the stars might soak into the black paint with it being so thin. They might not show up as well as some of the others. And I've just noticed while doing the stars the. Can you see in the middle of this white paint here was sprayed as a white source, a big star, but it started separating a bit. That's because it's just a bit too much paint in that one area. Like I said, this car paint's a lot thinner and some of the cheaper brands are thinner paint. So if you're using thin paint, just use a lot less than you would if the paint was thicker because it'll start separating like this. So now with all the background done, it's time to lift the lid stencils back off. So just take your time when you're lifting the lid stencils off because the background of the painting is still wet. So I'll do this smaller one first. So like I said, the paint was wet when I put these lid stencils on. So it is stuck a bit, the lid stencil. So I'll just take my time lifting it off. So as you saw there, the lid did stick a bit and it's left a bit of a mark there, lifted some of the paint off on the shadowed side of the planet. Not sure how well you can see in the video. So now I'm going to move on to the big lid stencil. So just take your time. So this one's stuck a bit. So like I said, take your time and you're lifting the lid stencil off. That one was stuck as well. And has also left a bit of a ring, lifted a bit of a paint up here. You might be able to see this one better. Because it's a bit more lifted, a bit more paint off. Can you see there the ring? The only reason why that has happened is because I put the lid stencils on while the paint was wet. If I'd let the paint dry before placing the lid stencils on, this wouldn't happen. Having a ring on your planet. So I've just noticed after lifting the big lid stencil off on this planet, that there are some marks showing through. Like some star shapes. This is nothing to do with the paint or anything. This is because of what was on the canvas before I painted it. As a canvas I'm using had some like glitter stars on it. So what I did was I scraped the glitter off 
and this must be some of the glue that was left behind. But I think it's alright because it's given quite a cool effect on this big planet here. Looks as though there's a few lights in the shadowed area of the planet, which I quite like. So I had no intention of this happening, it's just happened because it's reacted with something on the canvas. But I think it's given a real nice effect, I quite like that. So sometimes things happen in the painting that you weren't expecting, but turn out pretty nice. And I quite like this here. So I'm quite happy with the way this has turned out. I like each of the planets, I like the colours on them, I like the background. And as I said earlier on, there was just a bit too much paint here in one area, so the white had started to separate. But that doesn't matter, I still like the way it looks. I'm still really happy with the way it's turned out. Like I said, I haven't used these paints for over four years now, so it was something new to learn again. Together like the, the control of a can and how the cap sprays and things like that. So it may take you a while to get used to your cans and the caps you were using, and how to press the cap down with different pressures when doing different things. But like I said, just take your time when you're doing things, and enjoy while you're painting, and let each layer dry before moving on to the next. Right then, there's one last thing to do before the painting is finished, and that is to sign the painting. So I'm going to be using the screwdriver for this, and I'm going to sign the painting here. Right then, so that's the painting signed, and if you remember earlier on in the painting, I said you could also use a white pen to sign your painting with. As this hasn't showed up very well, I think the paint was a bit too dry there because I had to swap my batteries over in the camera. So I'm just going to go and show you how a white pen would work when you sign it. It's just the same. All you do is you get it and then just sign your signature or your marking on your paintings. Now we've signed the painting, the painting is finished. And as you saw, Repainting a printed canvas can work well for when you're starting off spray paint art. Just make sure you give them a good clean before you paint on them. So if you are going to use a second hand canvas, something with a print on or something like that, just make sure it's got no glue or anything on it or any glitter or anything like that. Because if you don't completely clean the glitter off and the glue, it'll show back through it like it's shown back through here. But I don't mind it showing up on this painting because it's given a quite a good effect on this big planet. It wasn't intended, but I like it. And as you saw, using some simple and free materials, you can make some cool space paintings. So I'll just give you a closer look of a painting. So you can see there where the glue showing back through, the star shapes there. That's what was holding the glitter on the painting before I painted over it. But I'm still really happy with the way it's turned out. And up here you can see the paint start separating on the white. So I hope you found the information in this video helpful and enjoyed watching. If so, please like and subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. Also, don't forget I'll be doing a review tutorial video for each of the brands I listed earlier on in this video. With the first one coming in two days and every two days after. Once again, thank you for stopping by and watching. I hope to see you all in the next spray paint art video. Have a great day, take care and bye for now.